Alright, right, make sure you Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back. It's me, Nana, and I'm coming at y'all with another video. I'm coming at y'all with a discussion video because recently in this quarantine, like, I've been on the deep, dark depths of the YouTube world and I've been looking at a lot of, like, hype beast uh, content. Mainly people who have problems with the hype beast content and it's honestly been making me laugh. Shout out to Ari Kagan. Shout out to Tripping. Man, those guys are actually killing it. But today I wanted to talk to you about something that I feel is very important, which is the importance of hype beasts and why I think it's important to be a hype beast. Now, what is a hype beast before we even get started? According to Urban Dictionary, which is like the best dictionary out there really, he says a hype beast is a kid that collects clothing, shoes, and accessories for the sole purpose of impressing others. Oh. Oof, yep. <sighs> Oh what? This hat? Just a little Noah. <laughs> yeah, this sold out. <laughs> You're literally trying to flex a hat we both have. That's why you see hypebeats having no style, no originality. I mean, they might have some, but at the end of the day, they all kind of wear the same thing. So, now why are hypebeats important? I got two main reasons why. One because everyone needs a starting point and two without being a hype beast it's not it's not as easy to branch off into other aspects of fashion let's get into that first point first now when i say everyone needs a starting point i really mean that when people generally get into fashion i feel like the first thing that kind of gravitates towards the two is like all right what's the most popular thing like you know what i mean right now supreme oh maybe it's bait maybe it's off-white maybe it's gucci maybe it's lv you know what i'm saying they'll purchase the items from those brands but they'll also purchase the items that are most popular from those brands like say say i'm someone with a lot of money or have access to money and i want to get more fashionable and like i want to get into the hype beast culture you're probably going to end up buying some supreme box logos you're probably going to end up buying some off-white collabs you're probably going to buy you know some gucci some gucci graphic that says gucci or the gucci sneakers or something like that some gucci aces it's basically like baking a cookie you like all the recipe is already there for you all you have to do is follow it so you follow it it's very easy to get into sometimes you can even build your wardrobe up like that you can even get your money up like that like because of hype and resellers and stuff like that most of the time the stuff you buy that's hype you can often resell it to get more money so you can't be mad at that too much and it also doesn't require a lot of thought like like i said it's kind of brainless i feel like no offense to any hype beasts out there but let's be honest it is pretty brainless like you walk in you're like hmm that guy's fit sick i'm gonna just take it word for word piece by piece and not add anything to it maybe i might change up the shirt or something but at the end of the day it's all really the same you're wearing the same supreme shirt same gucci shirt you all shop with the same brands you know what i'm saying the same jeans now on to the second point I feel like it's also easy to branch off because when you start off as a hype beast, a lot of the hype brands end up doing a lot of collabs with like other brands. I think like the biggest the proponent, the biggest perpetrator, proponent, whatever, of this is like Supreme. Like, for me, Supreme was what really uh, helped me learn about undercover, hysteric glamour, really a lot of like the Asian side of like fashion or clothing and stuff like that. It kind of gives you a jumping point into other things like even Off-White. Off-White does collapse with certain people, you know, Nike obviously, but who doesn't know what Nike is? But stuff like that, Bape, Bape does a ton of collabs with other people and I feel like a lot of the collabs they do with other people are always like cooler brands in my opinion. So very easy to jump off and be like, hmm, let me see what that brand's talking about. Supreme did a collab with Undercover, let me go check it out. Bape did a collab with Mastermind, let me go see what Mastermind's about. Even though I feel like Mastermind is getting pretty popular too. Aside from it being easy to branch off, I feel like getting into hype beast culture, it's easier to branch off because once you realize, like once you figure out the matrix, you're like, man, I don't want to dress like these guys anymore. Let me branch off and do my own thing. Or because of the collabs, I've now gone into this other part of streetwear where I can be more focused. It's a test, you know what I mean? Take the red pill or the blue pill. And once you break the matrix and you realize, uh, whoa, look at all this stuff. Rick Owens, Raph, Amber Lee Yoji. 
I feel like hype, being a hype beast is an important stepping stone in the journey. Now, I'm not saying everyone who gets into fashion starts off as a hype beast, but I feel like a majority of people started off as hype beasts before they got into like, I'm not saying actual fashion, but like a deeper appreciation of fashion instead of just wearing stuff to flex for your friends. But all I'm saying is hype beasts are important. And as important as they are, the jokes will still fly off at them. I'm sorry, like that's just how it is, you know what I mean? Someone needs someone to pick on. But at the end of the day, wear what you like. People who look at me might think I dress like fucking shit. So at the end of the day, do what you like, man. But all I'm saying is let's hate on hype beasts a little less because they are important. Now, if y'all like this video, make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, do whatever you need to do. Follow me at nana.ndt. It's been me, Nana, and I'm out. Thank you for watching.